Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the October 16th, 2018 version of the Municipal Budget Committee of Hampton. I hope you will all join me in expressing our Pledge of Allegiance to our Republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's always an inspiring way to begin a meeting, isn't it? Okay. Um, you want to sing God Bless America? Would you like to, Frank? <laughs> I have a, a, a frog in my throat oh, right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, introduction to members, beginning with uh, Mr. LaBranche, please. Stephen LaBranche. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. David Mara. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Mike Bluff. My name is Jones. Brian Warburton. Frank DeLuca, School Board Representative. And then we also have with us tonight our Recording Secretary, the lovely Barbara Kravitz, <laughs> and uh, the equally lovely Christy Pulliam, our Finance Director, who will be speaking to us about finances in a moment. First, we have uh, old business. And uh, first on the agenda is NHMA, and it was primarily about the NHMA protocol of contacting NHMA uh, that the Board of Selectmen have uh, brought clarity to last night, and Regina is going to regale us with that wisdom now. Okay, so I attempted to, uh, it doesn't have to be that close. <laughs> I attempted to uh, rescind the Board of Selectmen policy last <laughs> night. Uh, clearly that would have failed. The chairman had come up with an alternative motion that pretty much restricts access for both boards to the chairman and the vice chairman. So anyone on either boards may ask or inquire about questions to NHMA through their vice chair or chairman. And then at that time, those, two, those four bodies actually on both boards will have access to NHMA. So although it was not what I was shooting for. I was shooting for it to completely rescind the policy. I explained why. I thought it was lack of transparency. We're preaching transparency to uh, Portsmouth City Council members, and it appears they could be listening um, with taxpayer money, and I think that every elected official in this town, regardless of what board they sit on, should have equal access to a resource that is provided to the town. So that is where we stand on that. I voted yes because I felt that it was at least in a better position than we were prior to the meeting. And as far as legal questions go, if the budget committee or the chairman or the vice chairman of the budget committee have a legal question that they would like to inquire to NHMA about, they may do so. But the only stipulation on that is once they get a response, that the chairman of the board of selectmen get to know the answer that the budget committee received from NHMA prior to anyone else receiving that information. And then the second motion. Well, let's do with one motion at a time, okay, if sure. you could. Uh, I want to get clarity that uh, it's my understanding that uh, the way that it was worded was that um, if any one of us are in a seminar by NHMA, then we will no longer be restricted from asking <laughs> questions at that seminar, as apparently at least one member has had that experience and uh, that will no longer be true is that correct correct you should if you're attending an HMA seminar you should have access as anyone else that attending the seminar does okay to so we've, achieved, we've, achieved, we, we've reestablished equality on that front yes um, and this is you know and I, and I want to let everyone speak on this that wishes to speak but there'll be no motions on this tonight uh, if we want to make motions relative to the budget uh, we can do that when we're speaking about that particular line item. But I do want to uh, say that while for decades any elected official in town or even an employee uh, has been able to contact an NHMA directly with legal questions, that was changed a few years ago. Uh, a few years ago, uh, certain, uh, shall we say, uh, animosity seems to develop between the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee some might even call it a, you know, a series of battles that might even look like kind of like a political war. 
but I see this step as a positive a step in a positive direction. It's not back to normal, so to speak, but it is in the right direction. And it, it is kind of a, a way of uh, expressing, not with words, but with the <coughs> action of the motion, in my mind anyway. It's a way of basically de declaring peace without requiring either side to surrender. Well, let's just move on and do our duty. I think that's pretty much the message that I am seeing. I hope that your thoughts will reflect an understanding of that larger uh, atmosphere that has taken place. So does anyone wish to talk about the motion one on the NHMA from last night's selectors meeting? I do. David. <coughs> Um, my understanding is back on 214, 2014, 2015, and 2016, which is even on the, <clears throat> the X videos, the gentleman that, that came to speak during those years, I saw the video uh, last week, going back to that time, and when he was here presenting to this board, <clears throat> or everybody was in this room, I think it was a budget meeting, and he explained very clearly that everybody has the open right to call and do that. Um, and I'm the one who went to the thing in Stratham and I was told, you can't do that. Then I was told it was the selectmen. Um, I, I uh, still am quite disappointed in reference that there's not total transparency. I uh, commend Regina for <clears throat> trying to do it and trying to get it through. And I agree with her position of total transparency. I think that should be transparency of everybody for every town, every official in the state, and including the highest level government, which we know is a nightmare at that level. And I was hoping we could leave get by the minor one. So I think it's a nice compromise in one way, but I'm still going to dissent in the fact that some people seem to have some strange fears of if you talk to the lawyer to get a clarification of a law that you're going to misinterpret it. Well, if I do misinterpret it, then you and that's good that I say to people is that, oh, that's not right. This is what it is, and you get corrected. So I see absolutely no problem at all with the way it was, and it should be that way. However, I would have to say 70% of something is better than 100% of nothing, which is one of my big sayings. So I'm going to leave it at that. With, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'd like to thank Regina for, I really mean this, thank, thank you for trying. I know Mary Louise tried. and. Uh, Maybe in the future it might turn around when you guys really get showing we're only trying to ask legal questions that confuse us. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Mr. Just, just a point of information. Do the selectmen follow this too, that only their chair and vice chair can contact? It is that way, yes. Uh, well, if they're living by it, I think we can. Anybody else? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to right. be I'm going to be the damper on this in a, in a right way. <coughs> I like Mr. Mara spent the last weekend, and if there's one thing about me, I know I do my homework. I know what I'm doing, and I know what's going on. I stayed up late Saturday and Sunday, and even today this morning, and I reviewed Attorney Buckley's presentation to you folks. Most of you were here at that time. The exact words that he stipulated in his presentation on this training. God forbid anybody ask any questions. He said his exact words, all elected and non-elected town officials and or town employees can contact NHMA. Said that right here. What I find is ironic, we keep hearing about going to these wonderful workshops. The very people who gave you advice are now the recipient of one person saying this is the way it's going to be in the town of Hampton. I think that's an absolute abdication of responsibility and also a reflection of what's going on in this town. What I find even more interesting is, and I said this before, and I don't know if it was two years ago, I think you were right, Mr. Chairman. When Dave Lang tried to reduce the $18,000 from, but he did it the wrong way. He took it out of the budget. It passed on the deliberative session floor. The problem is the budget didn't pass. What, needs to be done this year, and I can pretty guarantee it's going to be done in a warrant article, knowing it may take a year because we pay the bills in January for NHMA. It's the principle of the thing. The interesting thing is I investigated NHMA and their website today, 
what I found even funnier, what I listened to last night. Let's say I have a question of NHMA about the conduct of the Board of Selectmen and how rules are being made with taxpayer money. That's a valid question. It behooves anybody in this town to say to the taxpayers, we want you to approve $18,000, but we're going to tell you how we're going to use that $18,000. Regina, who does a lot of great things, and there's no question about it, and, and you actually made a comment today about the DLT, about being dictatorial. You have that going on your board right now. Oh, well, I know. But okay, I well, I understand, but let me finish. I didn't elect them. Um, I understand that. But <laughs> no. we can no longer sit back, and I expressed this to the chairman. I'm not in the business of sitting here and wearing all year the word, I'm going to compromise with anybody. We are separately elected board. You know, I don't tell the precinct what to do. I don't tell the selectmen what to do. They shouldn't tell us what to do. And I can tell you the perception in this community and this is one of a lot of issues that have gone on, but the one we're sticking to tonight is NHMA. The perception is you've got to be, and I'm not including you in this, but part of this club. What I found really interesting last night, our town attorney sat there almost fidgety like, well, can you guys let me know too what the question is? Are we now in a position where everybody's afraid of their own shadow? The chairman that sat in your seat last night, his quote was, well, we look to our town attorney for advice. Well, let me see, Mr. Bridal. You, you confuse everybody anyway. Let's confuse it even more. You're now telling the public, we're going to tell people who can talk to you in HMA, but in fact, we don't need them because we have our town attorney giving advice. This is a bunch of crap. It's exactly what it is. And I've had enough of it. And if somebody, you know, I'm not part of any club. Like you, I do it for the benefit of the town. People need to sit at this board and other boards and stand up to this board of selectmen when things aren't right because they're the, the governing body of this town. I'm not happy, uh, as Mr. Marr said, he's content with 70%. I'm not. It's the principle of the thing. So my question, if I ask a question through our good chairman, uh, Mr. Jones, or my longtime friend in this, this committee, I must say, as an aside, a personal privilege, you should be very lucky to have a Mike Pluff on any board in this town. Mike and I served together 23 years ago. So we don't need to talk about Mike Pluff. He's a gentleman. He's, he's highly ethical. He sees the same stuff I do. I will, and, and I just want to say one more thing, because Regina did bring up a good point last night, but then it kind of went sour about we have nine people now that get along, we all do along, but guess what? It's not sitting well with me. So this relationship that you've alluded to or, or the common ground, and I'm using my words, not yours. The atmosphere. The atmosphere. Is changing is in a positive direction. Uh, well, I, it, it may not be exactly the way it ought to be, but it I, is definitely changing in a positive direction. And that was the limit of my statement. The atmosphere is I think, changing in a positive direction. Yeah, I think it could have changed. It isn't as far as I'm concerned now with what's happened. Because get a load of this. When I watch the precinct meetings, I respect Bob Ladd. Steve LeBranch sat in this room on the very first night in 1996 when we put Channel 58 on TV. And Stephen was a beach precinct commissioner. I've raised some great comments through the years and had the highest respect for other boards. But I'll be done if the Board of Selectmen or whoever is going to tell the Budget Committee what we can and cannot do. And as I expressed to you, um, there will be, and, and I, I committed to the Chairman, that after tonight, we're not going to hear anything more about it because we've got important business to do, and that's why I wanted it settled in May. The only other thing I'm going to mention on this, and this is to no slight for the Regina, but this is what I do as processes. In May, we sat here, and the decision was made that we would have a meeting, or let me rephrase it, there was a meeting with Mike Pluff, Tim Jones, you, the deputy town manager, the 17 assistants, the town manager, we got all kinds of positions in town hall. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they came out of that meeting, because we sat here and said, from that point on, the chairman and vice chairman of the budget committee can be utilized to go to. Then it went away. Right. Everything went away. And it said, then we started saying to ourselves, boy, that's interesting. So the reason why I'm not even for this, because it was reneged on the first time we tried to do it at all a branch. And then I asked in June. Then I asked in July. Then I asked in August. And you guys can go back and look at all the meetings. I am a principal person. But I can't sit here to the taxpayers of Hampton and say to them, still vote for the 18000 because you're getting your money's worth. Going to a conference, as Dave Mara did, which I found interesting, to the same conference where he wants to learn about the budget committee, told him that he can call that he can't call the NHMA. So think about what we're saying, right? And um, 
I want to make one more comment, and, and some of the people, not Regina, at that board last night need to spend time doing their homework, because one of the selectmen who sits on the other side made a comment, oh, the citizens can call on HMA. No, they can't. You've got to be a member community of the NHMA. So we throw stuff out there, and the public is sitting at home. Uh, I'm just, I'm disgusted. Like you said, it's, it's your opinion, and maybe the and majority, I'm sure the majority disagrees with the fact that I think it's, it's not a win-win. But I can tell you it doesn't sit well with me because I just feel that there's, I think the next thing's going to come down is, up. Oh, the police chief comes in, you're only allowed to ask three questions, you're going to spend 10 minutes. I'm telling you, that's coming down the pike. So I, left, I leave it here. I want to thank you for letting me speak my piece. I'm not happy. It is absolutely the most unethical thing. If I had pulled as chairman of the board what was pulled last night, they would have run me out of town. And they're allowed to get away with it. I, I don't get it. It's one big club. So that's all I'm going to say in the matter. Anybody else? Mr. Bluff. I agree that... It's a step in the right direction, but it should have gone 100%. Nothing less than 100%. This is an independent body, and it should not be, after we pay the dues, it should not be told what it can and can't do. It's a disservice to the public, is what it is, and to this committee. I, I, I'm not happy either. I'm as, I go back a long ways. He said so. We've been there together. It was never like this. Mm. This this tension in town is terrible. terrible. It's it's destroying everything. It's it's not right. <clears throat> Anybody else? Well, I will I will point out that the board of selectmen is not dictating to us anything. It's really important to remember that, Brian. We are not being dictated to. The NHMA is an entity that is a lobbying group that represents, that lobbies for the selectmen. And they work in the community according to the rules established by the selectmen. NHMA has default rules as to how they work in a community, but any one community via the selectmen can change those rules. So if the selectmen are dictating to anyone, they are dictating to NHMA, and that's an accurate statement. They're dictating to NHMA how NHMA will work in this community. They are not dictating to, to the budget committee. I hope you realize, Brian, I would not tolerate dictation yeah. well, I, of I, that I, nature. So I want to be clear on this point. It's an important point to me. Yeah. They are not dictating to yeah, us. Yeah, they are, because I'll tell no, you why. No, they are dictating to NHMA. Okay, but hold on a minute. Now, NHMA Regina, could kill. one thing that was missing from last night was the rid. action item of communicating the new protocol to NHMA. So I'm, I'm sure you'll follow through to see that that takes place. Yes. OK, great. I can call Steve Buckley myself, can I? <laughs> yeah. The NHMA <laughs> could care less what the rules are. They're getting their Post money. Right. I disagree that there's no dictation, because the motion was presented. I'm yeah. certain the chairman didn't have the ability or the knowledge to write that motion. It was written by the town attorney, and he read it. If you saw it the second time he read it, he's like this. Uh, well, um, come on, let's not kid anybody, OK? So I, I disagree. I'm not going to get a long speech. I've been there. I've done that. It was a dictatorship, and it is. Whether you agree or not, that's my opinion. There's a lot of other people's opinion, too. Well, let me just add to that in the sense that if I'm at Stratum <clears throat> with 30 other towns, yeah. actually with a lot of selectmen over there with, with their budget together, yeah. to be honest with you, I was very surprised at how well everybody got together and got along with each other. And I'm not BSing so it. It was really good. The bottom line was, out of all those people in that room, the selectmen in our town decided we couldn't go by as a budget because they get ticked off at somebody in the budget committee, like yep. a bunch of children. There you go. And they had a hissy fit, whoever the people were. So the, the lawyer tells me, David Mara, you cannot. That's it. They're being dictated. Thank That's you. not the lawyer because the lawyer would have gone along. He couldn't do it because he, the, the rules say, in reference to what you said, mm -hmm. In reference, it's a governing for the selectmen. So he has to follow what they tell him. Right. And that dictators told him, don't talk to those people. It goes through us. That's dictatorship. I'm agreeing with you 100%. But it's, but it's, not, it's not a dictation directed at the budget committee. It's no, directed. It no, it affects the budget committee members. But it's directed at an HMA. Dictation. You have to keep in mind at all times, an HMA is a lobbying group. They are not a lobbying group for the citizens of the town of Hampton. They're not a lobbying group for the members of the budget committee. They're not a lobbying group for the members of the planning board. 
they are exclusively a lobbying group for the Board of Selectmen, okay? And they will respond to the direction of the Board of Selectmen because that's the nature of the relationship. They are dictating to NHMA. Now, you may consider that dictation imprudent, uh, unhealthy, all kinds of things, but we are not being dictated to. I assure you, I will never stand for this body to be dictated to by anybody. I try to work cooperatively, cooperatively whenever possible, but dictation, I am not going to take as your chairman. And I wouldn't take as a member either. Well, I'm interpreting what happened. So I want to be clear on this point. And we are not clear, being, I don't agree with you. It's important that you realize the we only, are not being dictated to. The only to. town or city in the entire state of New Hampshire right. was here. I understand that. Dictation. I acknowledge that. But it's not dictation to us. It's basic one-on-one. It's not I agree dictation with, to I us. I agree with the chairman that it's not dictation to us. It's dictation to an NHMA. Right. So um, I guess we've <coughs> right, moving right. right along. <laughs> Can I dictate to you to move on to the next? Subject? No, you may not. <laughs> Has everyone spoke their mind on this uh, motion one? Great. Uh, motion two was more palatable. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed positive at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second motion was to grant the access that the Board of Selectmen has for the one annual free seminar a year to send that over to the Budget Committee for a topic of their choosing, as long as all elected boards and town officials are invited. So, and that will be from here on going out. I consider this to be 100% positive uh, motion. Um, there was the Budget Committee that discovered that we had a, free, a right to a free seminar every year back in 2014. We asked the selectmen, uh, may, may we please in 2015 have the seminar? We were granted 2016. We were granted 2017. The answer was no. We're going to hold a 91A seminar, which they did last year, as you may recall. Um, and then this year, uh, we were not able to secure uh, the authority to do so, to have that free seminar. So no free seminar was actually uh, put into effect this year. So we lost that, that benefit this year. Yeah. That free seminar was always available. It's nothing new. It just, yeah. you guys, did the, the questions weren't asked. And here right, we, but when they were here in 2014. No, I'm talking for all three of the years. I acknowledge that. Okay. But we, no one seemed to know it until they were here explaining themselves to the budget committee in 2014 as a consequence of Dave Lang's motion. And, you know, I was one of the advocates on the committee at the time saying we have to have them come in and explain who they are and what they do. And it was during that process that it was, it was learned that we were entitled to a free seminar. Okay? So I'm clear on that. That it was not, it's not a new free seminar. It was just newly well, known. No, newly known, yeah. But, I, but here we go again. And, and, and I just got to end this second motion by saying I find it very interesting that, oh, thank you, Board of Selectmen. We now have permission to have a free seminar. This is taxpayer money. This isn't the Board of Selectmen's money. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, no, I do get it, but the, we weren't, we, I just didn't come off the two. Ryan, the Board of Selectmen have control over that free seminar. They do everything with relative to energy. Then that's why the money's going to be eliminated, because and, nobody and, can and use so, it. And so the Board of Selectmen have, you could say, offered this all branch and said, here you go, Budget Committee. You just have authority to act on our behalf to uh, effectuate this free seminar every year. I see nothing but positive in that. No, no longer next year and years after that, no longer do we have to go say, may we please every year to get the free seminar. Well, I wouldn't put that, I would wait to see if we let, um, that to believe it. But I will tell you this. Well, that's what it, the motion says. It depends says. on Mr. Mara, um, and I assume he agrees with me on this too. Uh, I'm, I'm not of the same mindset. I've watched it. I've watched every meeting. I've seen, and you're saying next year it may change? Yeah, really? Okay. No, it changed as of last night. I understand. Well. I we haven't can got do, anything in writing. We can, it we, we, can, we can call the seminar right now, can't we, Regina? Uh, why would we go we to We have to find room in our calendar to make it happen, which will be possibly problematic, but we could do it this year. But why would we go to a seminar? No, we they can, come to us. Oh, whatever, they come to us. And then we sit there and take little notes. We're in seventh grade. We take a little snack and go home, and then we're told we can't call them. Think about <laughs> it. It's the most absurd thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm in the corporate world. I, I've never seen anything like this. This, this is just... Anyway, we're, we're looking forward. I am so looking forward to the questions I have for this budget season after watching last night and for what I'm hearing on some of the budget items. I can't wait. Anyway, that's all I have to Any say. Any other comments I'm on motion two? Either one of them. Mr. LeBranch. 
it was last year that the last year that they were here doing the 91A. Mm -hmm. Okay, just for the record. Right. I just, just no, just for the record, I want everybody to know that when I suggested that they come here and do the 91A, and then I also said to the town manager at the time when I was making the request last year when I was the chair of this board, I said, and open it up to everybody in this town that's on an elected board. Mm -hmm. So that was not. Um, something that they dictated. I want to make it very clear. They were very happy to, with my idea of having the 91A because it, it was a, a, a problem that we were dealing with. And, but I suggested that everybody, every elected person on any board in this town would be able to attend. Okay, I just want to clarify because the way you just said it a few minutes ago. I didn't use the word dictate. I said last year the Board of Selectmen took control and had the seminar themselves and they used 91A as the topic or something to that effect. Okay, okay. well, it, that was a, to that was clarify, a, I had the discussion well, and, and then I suggested instead of just having this board, uh, this committee rather, um, have the, you know, have the, um, the seminar for just us, I said, why not have it for everybody? And that's how it went down. And I thought that was a really good idea and I, I would suggest that, and didn't you just say that the wording in the second um, the second thing was that uh, that you can select or collectively this committee can select the subject, but right. all of the people would be still be able well, to attend. They're all public meetings, so everyone would be welcome to come right. to the meetings. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they can watch it on TV. Okay. Right. Same thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Or at your house. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Free Thank Comcast. You. Uh, any, any, Mr. Lo Mr. Moore. It just seems that. Uh, in one sense, I seem to be the guy that started all this because I was the guy when I came my first year. Responded no, it's to a note. Ryan's fault. <laughs> Responded hey, to listen, a note. I'm glad it's my fault. Responded to a note and not knowing about 91A, not having any training about whether blind carbon cop. No, I'm the one who officially started that. Unintentionally, whatever. But it was so small of a tidbit of what I did was saying, I, it, was, it was just so small. It was yep. incidentally. It should have been talked to you. Know, your, experience, your, your experience has been addressed in motion one. Right. That will no longer occur. My point being, it was blown up out of proportion, mm -hmm. and that led to the 91A being well because got, it got so big. That was why 91A was here. Well, that was started from. Let's, with, let's not go down the 91A okay. topic. Well, I want to go down the 91A part. Well, you're talking about it. And then they came here for that reason well, and taught us, and then I go to the thing three weeks later, get the big of 91A, and then until we can't use it, it's, so it's, 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 it's ludicrous. Okay, Any, anyone else want to speak on motion two? I still, I think motion two is ridiculous. I don't know why we have it. Okay, well, we do. Well, they do. And uh, Regina's going to see that it's put into effect with proper communication in HMA. And, uh, Are we going to get a copy of any communication? Regina, would you like to supply us a copy with your communication? <laughs> sure. I will do that. Then the answer is yes, Mr. Walker. Okay. Uh, HamptonBud.com. Very exciting. There's a, a somewhat new version out there. Regina, you'll probably appreciate this because it's mobile friendly. Nice. So it's not a phone app, but <laughs> I, have, I believe I've gotten all the pages so that they fit properly in a phone where you don't have to scroll all over the place. And so uh, beat me up over the head when you find something that doesn't doesn't uh, find itself friendly to your phone. Correctly. Yeah, I, 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 I use the iPhone 5 emulator, so it should fit any phone at this stage in life. So, okay. Um, did you send, did you review your changes to your website? Did you fly out to Kansas to get them done, or were you able to do those yourself? Uh, I did them all myself. Oh, thank you. Of course. Yeah. It's another yeah, question that will be works. asked during the budget committee process. But that's another ridiculous thing we did. I just want to check because I thought you flew out to Kansas because we have nobody locally that can do websites. Brian, I'm no longer in Kansas. That's right. <laughs> I forgot that. Thank you. He's Thank good. You. Brian, he's got real good slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chip. Yes, and it's very useful that you said that. It may not be helpful, but it's useful. <laughs> He's an old. We're going to use that phrase all year. Oh, I'm going to use it. <laughs> Kay Barr and I haven't even started. We're going to use it all during this season. And Frank, you should be happy to know that the, uh, the, the <laughs> documents relative to the minutes and agendas have been integrated again with the videos. You're uh, excited about that. And, and oh, so, yeah. Very excited about that. <laughs> well, I know it was raised in June at the July meeting. Yes. And, and uh, 
uh, I had discovered a, 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 a bug which required me to do a complete redesign, which has finally been completed. Uh, and there's been some other background designs that have taken place as well, uh, which will enable further useful information uh, out there, but it's not out there yet. So, all right. But the mobile, the, the mobile app that the, you it was not a, a mobile app. It's just a web app <laughs> that is web app that you can friendly to on the mobile. any size device you have, all the way down to an iPhone five. Okay. 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 So if you don't find you that still to may be have true, to go to Kansas, but for now he's working on it. If you don't find that to be true, let me know. And uh, and it's it's compatible with uh, iOS twelve. Well, no, it, it doesn't matter as long as your browser is functioning. It's just the browser based, so it's like any browser. But it's the device, the size of your device. It will conform itself to however big or small your device is. That's bigger than an iPhone 5, so you'll have no problem. Well, he's yeah. got tons of money. He can this afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure with the phone. <laughs> and also, I want to point out that, as you know, the Board of Selectmen's meeting last night had some, it was a three and a half hour meeting. No kidding, I watched it all, yeah. And uh, it had some interesting topics, so I made several snippets, uh, and especially the various budgets that were discussed. Yes. And all those snippets are there, and if you go on hit Thank the you. Bud, if you go on com to that meeting, you will see all the snippets associated with that yep. meeting. I, I will probably do a few more snippets, but I wanted to be sure to get the always famous NHMA topic out there. Oh, and I'm sure you will. It's already out there. It's Thank out there you. right now. For you at home, you can go there right now. Can you print these uh, snippets? <laughs> How do you print a video? Well I, I, I'm at, well, I know that. You have the video, but I mean, can you translate it, uh, the snippets to paper so we can, you know? I mean, I can't bring the video in and screen down. Actually, there is a way. There is a way. Since the, since the videos are on YouTube, I'm a paper guy. I'm old fashioned. You know, I need to read. Since since the videos are on YouTube, and YouTube does offer a closed caption, yes, then you can get very good it in text. And and if it doesn't work right for you, call YouTube. I'm sure they'll be happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, last night's selectmen's meeting in its entirety is up there, associated with that meeting, as well as the snippets I've created thus far of that meeting. Thank you. And all of the budget topics that were discussed last night has its own snippet. Okay. Great website. I think it's, a, and I was one that wasn't a proponent. You remember, you reminded me 23 years ago. It was a different website. A <laughs> different website. Outtime.com was the original. Yes, thank you. I understand. I was sitting right here when I had <laughs> blonde hair. Was it blonde? Yeah. But you've done a great job. I, I have to tell you, this is the easiest website. You can navigate around. It's got everything in chronological. I think it's I think you did a great job. So Thanks, see that? Thank I, you, Brian. I told you that it gets <laughs> So you found it useful and helpful? And helpful, yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Maybe too helpful. Okay. Uh, and that is old business list. Anyone else has any other old business that you would like to discuss? No. Such as the uh, rail trail or whatever. Oh. <laughs> uh, so no other old business? Thank you. Christy Pulliam, our wonderful finance yes. director, thank has you. been doing uh, some kind of very good work <laughs> using a concept which is which is uh, too often foreign to people, and that is she's doing this thing called what I call continuous improvement. Every year she tries to add a little bit of extra good stuff in the process. All right. This year, if you see, right, by the way, your presentation from last night was excellent, Christy, and that too is a snippet on the website as well. And uh, so she is going to now give us more information about the budget book status in terms of when we're going to get it and all that good stuff, and then we'll talk about something else. Go ahead, Christy. Can you're, I talk about you're, thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so basically, uh, Tim asked me to come in and kind of go over the whole budget process and discuss the difference between some of the DRA forms that are completed during the process. Mm -hmm. Um, and who signs what and approves um, the different forms that we go through. So I did a little PowerPoint for us here and I gave you guys it all in black and white over there. So I'll just kind of go through the slides here and if you have any questions, we can do them at the end or during whatever you prefer. So let's see here. I think the first thing that's confusing to people is the chart of accounts, which you guys see in the monthly financials and also in the budget, 
don't line up directly with the DRA form. And I know last year we ended up um, having some issues when the budget committee went to make motions because not everyone was following the exact same format. So basically the town um, account numbers have five different segments with the third segment lining up directly with the DRA form 737 and 232, which I'll discuss in a little bit. But so those middle numbers and like the third digits are the ones that do line up. And what I did this year in the budget books, I created the first page, I removed the summary pages that we had had and replaced them with a format that is similar to the DRA form so that when you guys are ready to make motions <coughs> and stuff, if you refer to those first two pages, you'll be making motions that will coincide with that MS 737, which I did provide to you guys over the weekend. Um, the reason the account numbers are longer is for the town, is bullet point number three there, is that they help us, the first three digits tell us what fund it's from, whether it's the general fund or the cable fund or the private detail, the different funds. And then the second set of digits to reflect a department um, number so that when you guys, I know well, all the department numbers by heart, so I know exactly <laughs> where I'm going at. And then the third digit will line up with the DRA and then the um, remaining four basically just kind of put all like supply accounts together across the budget and telephone and stuff. So if we wanted to see the telephone cost across the budget, we can run reports that way. So the reason that we do have the longer numbers is so that when we're asked to do research or something, I can pull it out based on looking at those numbers, whereas the DRA uh, accounts fill like four pages and our budgets have like 400 and something lines. So it's just to give, provide more details so that people can see better where items are being spent as opposed to public works just spends this much. By breaking it down the way that we do, you guys can see what they spend on supplies, what they spend on telephone, what they spend on their utilities, their gas and their diesel and stuff, which you wouldn't be able to see if we only use the DRA format. Is there like a key link on this? You know, you know, for example, where for budget 413 stands for well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the novice. I don't know what 413 I think Chrissy has prepared a presentation to do it contiguously and then and take questions after. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Apologize. Okay. So on the MS 737 form that you guys have, that is the form that is generated prior to the election. It's after the public hearing that the budget committee holds. That's a form that is signed by the budget budget committee. It's called the MS 737. I sent that to you on the weekend. It's not part of the presentation because it's like 10 slides. So since you guys had it, I figured it'd be yeah. easier for you to look directly at it. But those do have the um, four digit numbers that will coincide this year better with what the budget books look like. And um, that's the form that has to be submitted to DRA 20 days after the annual meeting and the budget committee signs that. Let's see. The next thing that we have is the MS-232. And the MS-232 is signed by the Board of Selectmen, and you also got a copy of that. And that, that happens after the actual election so that it shows appropriations as they were actually voted. Um, and so that form comes after the election, mm -hmm. and it only has the expenditures on there. So that kind of was like the breakdown in regards to the DRA forms, because Tim had asked, you know, what forms are, who signs what, and who does what form, who's responsible for what particular forms. And then I don't have this in my presentation at all, and you didn't receive it, but I also found this on the DRA website, and you did each get a copy. It's the town form required by DRA. So it literally lists out all of the forms, and you can see on there that the MS-737 is the one that the Municipal Budget Committee does sign. Yeah. Bureaucracy at its best, right? Let's say like 25 right. times. Let her, let her do a presentation. Oh. Well, this Christy did state. Let her do a presentation. Christy did state you could have it either way. Oh, you could ask questions now or at the end. That's what she said. 
And then well, it's the pleasure the of the committee. I'm not in charge of the committee, so <laughs> then he whatever should say you. Something. I so state that we're going to let Christy make her full presentation, and then we're going to have a wonderful interaction with Christy. Okay. But she did say that, so just for the record. Now it's on the record. So those are the two different forms that basically affect the budget process, and so that, those are the only two forms that I was, that I have printed and supplied to you guys. You can see those forms are from last year's, the 2018. They haven't been generated for 2019 budget yet. I don't even believe that the DRA has opened up the portal yet where I input all of the information. Yes. So I don't think I could give you 2019 if you wanted it yet. Um, the next thing that I was going to talk about was the budget format for 2019. Um, as Tim mentioned, I have been trying each year to do something a little bit different to improve the budget and the layout of the budget. Um, so I have added that first like I mentioned a little while ago, the first two to three pages of the budget summary will reflect exactly those <sighs> four-digit numbers that you see on the MS-737. The second change that I made this year um, in regards to the lay, how I laid out all of the documents in the book is I've kind of tried to categorize like the departments together or the items that most likely will be discussed on the same night together. So. In the budget book, instead of having to flip from police back to animal control, back to emergency management, you'll be able to keep them all right in a row, and they all have their own pretty little um, tabs on them in my book here, that in the books that you will also get, so that you'll be able to flip right to it, and when the police chief is here, I would assume at that same time you'll want to talk about the animal control budget, the emergency management budget, and the parking enforcement, because they all fall under that department. So I kind of tried to lay them out in a more chronological order, so to speak, that goes more along the lines of who does what as opposed to following the chart of accounts. And then the last big change um, was the presentation that I did provide to the Board of Selectmen last night that Tim mentioned earlier. And I am hoping to be able to do the same thing when I when the budget comes before the budget committee before you guys dig into the budgets and each department if I would be able to provide an overview similar to what I did last night um, so that you guys can see what the increase is and then what the breakdown of that increase is that's basically what I had done last night mm -hmm. so um, I think I got a little excited. So this is the same. This is telling yeah, me exactly good. what I just said. I was on the wrong side. There you go. I haven't been doing a lot of PowerPoints yet. So. Yeah, I believe I answered this question in your office this afternoon, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Tim did say in this afternoon when he was in checking in to um, see if I needed anything for tonight that you guys would definitely be interested in having that presentation. Um, I will do my best to get it out to you with your budget books, but it also takes a little bit more time. So in, with time being of the essence, I would assume that it would be better off to hand off the budget books to you and then provide you with the charts and presentation as they become available. Yeah. Um, I also know that every year there seems to be um, confusion when everyone is looking at the books and people tend to be on different pages. I think we even had a little, bl little bit of that last night when the budget, or when the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. was reviewing the books. Yeah. So if anyone here has any thoughts when we're done um, that they would like to see incorporated, I will do my best. It does, believe it or not, take a really long time to put these books together and to print them all and to get them into these orders. Regina can attest in, that I even had my child in here coordinating books and um, with me one day after school with she was here and um, there's a lot involved the reason that every year there seems to be more and more information because I do try and listen and I've heard that people want more details and so to get more details sometimes leads to more confusion I guess is the best way to express that so um, although the pages are in a little bit different of an order this year. They're still in that same format where you would see, and actually let's flip to the, we'll get to a slide that kind of shows you what I did in a sec. So basically when you get to each section, 
This is just an example. This is not anyone's budget yet. So this is just an example to show you. Basically, when you get to each section, I did finance because I'm sitting here and I figured if we'll do a sample of someone's budget, it would be mine. You'll have this um, Excel spreadsheet would be the first page that you come to when you go to the finance tab. And it's basically showing you what the 2017 actual was, what the 18 budget was, what the actual is year to date or wherever we're at. I think this is from 831. What I have requested as, or what the department head has requested, what the administration has done, if they've made any changes, you would see that here. Um, and I think right there is only part-time wages. They made a change there. And then <coughs> on the next page is where you would see all of the detail. And this is only, I only did a few accounts because I was trying to make it so that people could actually read it. I know it's hard to read it up there, but you can read it on your paper. Yeah. And so basically, where the, I feel like the confusion lies is a lot of times people are trying to take this chart and compare the chart to the numbers on this page. And that seems to be where a lot of the confusion yeah. has been along the budget process. And I think it's important to know that this backup here is basically showing you exactly what the department head has requested. I never, ever go back and change these numbers. And the reason that I don't is because, number one, it was never done. And number two is because I think it's important for everyone to see what someone has requested. And if I start changing these numbers, then I'm also kind of changing the content of what someone might have requested. Because, like, if... The budget committee, for example, or um, the board of selectmen or the administration, if they cut $20,000 off, there's not $20,000, but if they cut $450 off of the staff development line there, and I take that off of here, if it doesn't, you don't know exactly what they're necessarily cutting, mm -hmm. you know? And so I don't feel that it's right to change it on this page. Right. So that's where it would be changed on the front page. You would see, if you looked right. at admin, mm -hmm. you'd see, oh, they took $450 away. Let's talk to Christy and see, why did they take that away? Why did she ask for it? Maybe she still needs it. And then since it's the budget committee's budget, they should be the ones who can make the decision of, oh, we agree or we disagree. And we've had it go both ways when I've sat here before. We've had the board of selectmen or the administration take money away and then a department had come before the budget committee and get that mm -hmm. money right back mm -hmm. at the budget committee level. So that is the reasoning behind yeah, the fact sure. that I never do change this sheet. But I also feel that it's important to have it in there because it's letting you guys have as much information as I can supply to you. Yeah. <coughs> um, so that's kind of where the majority of the confusion lies. Okay. And now, look, I have question marks for you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> first of all, I want to point out that the, uh, this format of the budget book relative to what you were just speaking about, requests uh, from the uh, department heads, from yes. admin, uh, yes. from the board of selectmen, et cetera, <laughs> that was a form that was established long ago, long mm -hmm. time ago. Uh, and it was actually dictated by the budget committee because the budget committee has the opportunity to dictate what information we want and in what format we want it and in what time we want it. So that's an example of a historic fact of the budget committee having dictated to the administration what they want and year after year after year we preserve this process. Mm -hmm. right? and, and we appreciate your, your, your help in that very much. It's very useful. Um, and you're right, that request number is important to know. Um, I just want to highlight a couple things. The MS-232, that and only that is the actual operating budget for a given year, correct? Yes. It is not what we sign. Right? What we sign is a proposed budget mm -hmm. that goes before town meeting session one, also right. known as voter session, mm -hmm. and town meeting session two, also known as election. Right. The voters decide which of the two, the default or the proposed budget, uh, they would prefer. Now, help me out on this, Christy. First of all, Brian was talking about creating a warrant article as, as a citizen uh, about the uh, NHMA. And I want to ask you, since that would have a tax impact, would that not also be a money warrant article that the budget committee would have to review? 
I would assume it's, it has yeah. money involved, so yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But so, the committee reviews yeah. all money articles and puts tallies on them. Right. In the past, at least, right. just as the same as the Board of Selectmen has. just wanted to get clear on that, so if such a one article does get created, we will be reviewing it with all the joy that's associated with that. Uh, also, uh, the fact that we vote as a committee, historically, when we vote for the there are two numbers that go in the Warren article, known as the budget Warren article, right? The one's the default one, the default budget number, which is created by the Board of Selectmen only. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Warren article was put out there to give the authority to the Budget Committee. A majority of the voters granted that authority. However, the law requires it be 60%, so the authority remains with the Board of Selectmen. Right, Christy? Yes. The other number, the proposed number, the non-default number, if you prefer, is created by this budget committee. Now, when this budget committee creates that number, it's the bottom line number. It's not the individual line items. Although the individual line items have <coughs> some legal significance as well, right? Okay. Yes. So, but when it comes to creating that budget <laughs> warrant article, it's the bottom line only that goes in there. Okay. And we vote to put that number there. Okay. But that is not necessarily, you know, historically it has been implicit that because we vote to put that number in there, that we're recommending that it be approved. Correct? Because you vote to put the number in there that you recommend? Yeah, it's implied. I think your tally marks are on there. So yeah, that's what I mean. The tally is on. The tally is on. We make a motion to put that number there. We don't explicitly say we recommend it. So, so class this, year, this, year, this, year I, this year, I intend to entertain two motions on the bottom line number. One motion is, what number are we going to put in that warrant article? And the other motion is going to be whether we recommend passing that number or not. Because there are two distinct acts. One act is to put the number in the warrant article, and the other one is recommending that the voters accept or not accept it. Yeah. Right. So we're not, no longer going to marry that, those two motions into one. We're going to have two distinct motions, okay? Yeah. Now, if anyone wants any clarification on why that's important, I'll be happy to discuss that. But I wanted to highlight that to you guys. Uh, can I ask one question? Sure. But sure. So related to, okay, that one budget number that you're referring to, mm-hmm. okay, it, obviously that's the tally from all total sub-accounts. All the line items. Yeah. Line yeah. items, sub-accounts, yeah. whatever. Now, if that's approved or disapproved, whatever, if that number is approved, is it the bottom line that's approved or every subline that was approved? Or in other words, I'm asking, can that money that's been approved already be intimately changed? Like you had 10%, let's just use this crazy question. You know, like you had 50% for the fire department, 25% for the police department. Can that, after it's been approved, been changed to say 35% for the police department? Well, what do you mean by after it's been approved? By whom? And at what yeah, point in time? Obviously, you, I, I just want to know if the bottom line number that's been agreed to. Here at the budget committee? At, no, no. It, it, yeah, at the budget committee. Okay. Passed by the voters. Can that oh, number. Stop meeting then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can that number. Got it. Got it. Yes. Once the actual operating budget, the yeah. MS 232. Right. All right. Once that is created, then the Board of Selectmen have. Uh, Complete authority stuff within, cer- stuff within certain limitations. Right. Right. Okay. That's they what they cannot about. zero out contractual items, for example. So there right. are some limitations. Well, but for the right. most part, they have a free hand to move money from one line item to another. <coughs> okay. they can't right. Right. Yes. Yeah. And which, as long as that topic has been raised, I want to highlight to you, Christy, that last year, um, I believe the number was fifty thousand dollars that was uh, additional money put into the legal line item. By the board yeah. I don't believe there's been any official transfers. In yeah, they, the they, they, they voted to, uh, I believe the number was 50, wasn't it, uh, Regina? The, 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 the town attorney came in, or my Talking Carol. About last year? Yeah. Oh, God. Was that for the I, I, don't, I didn't bring my book from Do last year. Do you mean, year. It, there was a, I don't have my book from last year either. It was, it was put into the budget or? An official the board, transfer because I don't yeah, know that the, the board, board has ever transferred. Chose to add money. Could you transfer? I, I've no. never transferred anything. Oh yeah, I'll show you the video. I should have bought my computer. You're right, Dave. 
Yeah, because I actually sent a question uh, via Chairman LeBranch uh, asking, well, where, where are you taking the money from? And he sent it off to Mark Gerald, who said, we don't have to tell you where it's coming from <laughs> because uh, this, the it's law says right. this. Uh, I don't remember that. Too. Well, I got the memo I, as well. Yeah. Uh, in my, any me case, my memory, I don't remember that. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> in any case, uh, it's since, it's since no one seems to remember it except for my uh, wonderful memory. Well, number <laughs> one, I believe you. If you say you yeah, it, I mean, it yeah. happened, yeah. Yeah. Right. I will produce the material that proves that it happened so that you have necessary research. But my question is, uh, my question was, all right, the law says, and I, I can't remember the exact one, it was one of the 32 sub-items, uh, RSA 32. Um, it actually says that the uh, Board of Selectmen has the authority to move money from one line item to another, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they must do it in such a way that it can be clearly demonstrated to the Budget Committee you know, where it came from, where it went to. Uh, Mark Gerald's response was essentially, but the additional part of that paragraph was, if they keep sufficient reporting uh, uh, on a monthly basis, which I guess he was referring to your monthly financial reports, then they don't have to specify where it comes from, okay? But eventually it has to be decided to come from somewhere. It just can't come out of thin air, so. Um, well, I believe that he was probably, I don't remember, I don't recall any transfers, but. I'm not disputing his answer. I'm only I'm saying guessing that when that, well, it comes to the budget book, when we look at the actuals, how will it be reflected in the actuals? So, to the best of my knowledge, if there was not an official transfer, which I do not recall there ever being an official transfer while well, I've been the, the finance we'll director. We'll work offline on that. I'll get you that documentation. You may have documentation, but I'm just saying I don't recall there ever being an official transfer. So my guess is that the line item that he would have expended from would be overspent on the financials, and that's where you would see it. Hmm. Well, that So if it was outside counsel, it introduces let's just a new use that issue. as a line. No. If it was outside counsel, counsel, then it would be overspent by however much he overspent it, because we you we at least I encourage individuals, departments, and everything to put everything onto the proper line, even if you've overspent that line, right. so that it reflects, right. unless right. there is an official transfer, then of course we would do it from that account. But spend from the proper line in your budget yeah. is what I always preach. The, the, best, the best way I think to proceed on this is for me to produce Why would you do an official transfer? We don't, that I'm recalling. No, 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 but the, the, the question was proposed by you, that there was a $50,000, whatever, I don't care. Well, the, the, the reason it was proposed by I would think if somebody goes over budget. Someone else like doesn't. That, okay. As long as the <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> That's right. As long as the bottom line. Under. I agree with you, not, yes. You know, you know what I'm saying? You can be short in one line item. Correct. That's the over. approach we take. But why would you want to transfer? I do not believe that we did transfer. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm okay. just hypothetical. Right. Hypothetical. We don't normally do that. That is not oh, our okay. normal practice. Well, I try and, and I look through the bills every week, and if something doesn't appear to be out of a correct account number, I will question an individual or a department head. But because I say you should spend from the proper line right. that reflects well, no, what you're purchasing. The only reason I brought here. it up is if you're over budget, okay? Then in if the we're over budget, all the way over budget, we're in you big don't trouble. Can't, can't, oh, okay. well, no, you're you over don't. budget in a line item. In a line item, in a yes. Line item. Let, yes. me, let me clarify that, okay? Uh -huh. But as long as you come in on the bottom line, that's okay. But if you're over budget in the line item, that indicates that you under budgeted that line item in the next fiscal budget period. Not as well, not No, somewhere else in that, but that way, in that yeah. current year, somewhere else, another line is underspent. Right, right, all right. All right. right. But so that would be in the next fiscal year, you would balance that out to some degree. No, it would be yes. balanced in the current year. No, I understand that, but when you're putting the budget together. You're oh, when we're putting the budget yeah. together, yes. It would be wise of us <laughs> to, sorry. yes, right. increase the line. I understand what you're yes. saying, but it's not necessarily true. In this particular case, uh, is an example. Mark Jell came before the Board of Selectmen and said because of all these legal Le matters legal that we're dealing with, yeah. including a lawsuit against the state, yeah. I anticipate that I don't have enough money in my budget. And uh, it was decided at that point that you know, $50,000 uh, 50, should be added to his legal. Yeah. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean to imply that he needs 50000 more every year forevermore. No, okay? no. So that, that's an example of why you would do it. And, and, and why they, they did do it. And, and I will, and, and just to put this particular issue aside for now, but it's a, on a conceptual level, I don't want to put it aside. 
But this particular issue, there's best work for me getting the documentation that I have to Christy and let her follow up. And, and, and then, I, then her or I or both of us will report back to the committee as a whole. Okay. But as a concept, I am, I am uh, concerned about uh, the actuals that we're, we're seeing uh, in terms of how that kind of behavior takes place. Uh, are the actuals truly the actuals? I mean, if you go over, if you don't actually move the money into, say, legal, and he did go over $50,000, would it see that he spent $50,000 more than he was budgeted? Would that would, is that what it would show? If it wouldn't actually. Okay, great. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was the essence of my question. Yeah. Uh, okay, but then if you did that, then you would keynote that, that there was an exception. Yeah, well, there, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mr. LeBranch. Just to make maybe a little bit confused here. <clears throat> so this MS-232, yeah. it's signed by the governing body, but of Correct. course, these numbers that Christie submits, it's the appropriations actually voted by, right. of course, the legislative right. body. Right. Now, it's the actual operating yes. budget. Now, the, just to make, uh, I'm a little bit confused here. So after, you were saying that after this was sent in, that Mark Jarrell appeared before the Board of Selectmen and asked them to right. to request that 50000 more after this was done. Right. Last year? Yeah, I'll get the documentation. And then, let's, not, let's not dwell on it. I'll get the documentation, and we'll get further clarification on it, okay? okay. And I'll even no. send you the documentation as well. Well, no, the reason, because I think you said that you, at the time it came before this, this um, budget committee as well? I raised the question at this budget committee. You were chairman. I don't remember that. And, you, you, and it was after the legislative body, and this it, this was already sent in. Yeah. Do you remember that, Christy? It was well, done. It was done like yeah, August. Yeah, this is like Christy will figure it out. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm I looking forward that. to that because I, I don't First remember all, I could, ever I, having that having that done. Well, let's let's not spend time on that now. We'll we'll get more background on it yeah. with, with the Can I offer research. that you brought up some experience and background in this sort of area? Yeah, only if it can be both helpful and useful. Uh, but <laughs> what this little branch is saying, it's not unusual at all. The voters appropriated on March 10th, let's say, of last year. Right. The minute that's voted in, it's now the selectmen's budget. They can do whatever they want. So Mark Gerald, in his defense, may have come two months later and said, yeah. I need an additional 50000 it, it doesn't matter where they take it from. We would like to know where they took it from. Mm -hmm. But so let's be clear that once that happens, that happens all the time. Mike can tell you, we've had legal expenses that changed. That's, a, that's, a, that's an ongoing. Uh, I do this all the time with the village district. Yeah. Mr. Yes, Mr. the treasurer. And, okay. and everyone else, I, I agree 100% yeah. with that statement. I didn't say anything contrary to that. No, no, I know. I just Nor was I pl implying anything contrary to that. No, and I, know I just wanted to understand how, how it would be, would be reported in our books. It's a tough area. Uh, and so. Since it's a specific question, we'll get the documentation. Yep. We'll get more information it would be on nice, that. Yes. But MS 232 is the actual budget approved only by town meeting, that is to say, by the voters. Right. Yep. Whether they choose the default budget or our right. proposed budget, it, whichever one they choose will be in the RS 232. <coughs> right, Christy? Excuse me. And yeah, so that's the actual budget. And you might note in the 232 that the middle column also shows you the articles. So if there was a warrant article, a money warrant yeah. article. It also That's puts correct. that amount in there as well. Okay, just to just to know. So it's not just it, this isn't just the 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 default budget or the other budget. It's the warrant out of all the money, Everything. all the money. So the, what's the contents of MS thirty two are is either the numbers from MS seven thirty seven's default, right, or MS seven thirty seven's proposed budget, right? Plus, there's not an MS seven thirty seven default. That's a separate yeah. MS-37? No, it's not called. It doesn't ha It's just called, I think it's um, MSDT, I believe. Is oh, it's the a default. different form. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, if we look, we really want to look at is MS-232 is the god for any... Correct, but the year. question was asked to me, I believe, or at least the way I understood it was, yeah. what forms are approved by the budget committee and signed by the budget committee and what forms... Does the governing body sign? Yeah, and so well, that's, that's I, I just grabbed those two forms to bring here that's tonight. That's because my question was based on some level of ignorance, which has now been somewhat resolved. I think you explained okay. it well in the beginning of the two different forms. One's budget right. money. The yeah, other I didn't learn that until today, oh. however. So I didn't ask the question exactly as I probably ought to. Uh, and that was the nature of my ignorance. 
Uh, so it's MS232, that is the document from God, that is to say from the voters, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so if I look at uh, the... MS-232, I find we have on page 3, um, down near the bottom, we have conservation, everyone knows that to be one of my favorite topics. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, conservation and development is the category. Is that, I, that's what I'm going to call that as a category, right? Yep. And then underneath that are the line items in that category. And so I see that we have line items that we never ever think about, like redevelopment and housing, economic development. All this falls under conservation and development. But when we think of conservation, we just think of Conservation Commission, right? Typically, that's all we talk about, Conservation Commission relative to the word conservation. But conservation development Tim, the, that, this form is for everybody. And I understand that, Steve. You might note on page two, uh, I, I there's stay something on this point. for airports and aviation center, yeah. and yeah. it's zero. Yeah. We don't have an airport. And it's just yet. part of the form. Some, some, <laughs> Manchester has an airport. Stephen, yeah. I know it's part of the form. That's why I'm explaining it okay. from the form. So can I, can I add some? Conservation can Commission is under this category, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's right there, the 35,000. Can, can I add? Right, uh, so it's. Under that category, it's called administration and purchasing of natural resources. Right. Can I add for clarification to the voters at home, and maybe some of you here, the economic development line has been in here in perpetuity. In yeah. perpetuity. In 1983, we had an economic development commission, mm -hmm. which yeah. actually went out and secured funds for businesses. One, Mike remembers, was in Depot Square. We actually had people who one on the Board of Selectmen and a group of people uh, that handled under economic development. And the, 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 the rhyme, the reason there was, let's never totally get rid of it because we may revisit it years to come. Because I get people saying to me, what's economic development? We don't do it, but that's why it's there. You well, can't, you get, can't rid of get rid of any of these things. No, I know it's that. It's not on my form. No, I know that. But years oh. ago, there was a concept that yeah. said, why are we carrying over? Right. You know, this, is, this is a DRA. It is now, but in 83, it was a little different. Right, and, and, and that's why I find the DRA forcing these uh, yes. Dictating, if you prefer, right. the charter accounts in, in such detail on every municipality to be interesting mm -hmm. because it shows what we don't do yep. as well as what we do mm -hmm. do. And uh, uh, economic development, we never ever seem to give any consideration at all to this as a body politic. I don't mean just the budget committee. Right. Same with housing and, and, and redevelopment and housing. In other conservation, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but <laughs> apparently it's other. Uh, but there was another one in here that, that caught my attention, which was in the 737, and I assume it's in the 232 as well. You shouldn't line up with the And there it is on the last page, page four. Uh, capital outlay. Now this, cat this category is even more interesting than the conservation, if you can believe that. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, when I hear the word capital, it, it raises certain flags in my head. Like, capital is not an expense, it's an asset, right? Something you acquire and has a life beyond, say, a year's time frame. Something that's depreciated. Something that I assume is taken to consideration with gas fee, which we implemented, what, two years ago now? Yes. And we're depreciating all of our assets under gas fee now? Yes. Okay, so that would include all of our capital assets, and I assume, right? Yes. Okay, and so all of our capital assets, uh, in terms of uh, expenditures for those capital assets, are going to fall under this capital outlay category, right? Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. I'll so disagree, false I assumption. Okay. <laughs> because if you look back on, a lot of ours will be under debt service because a, a lot of our capital assets or whatever end up going into like debt, long term right. debt and stuff. Right. So they fall into different categories okay. in regards to these, this form. Um, okay. So if it's capital. Sometimes the vehicles end up in like the departmental things. 
you know. Well, this is where it's confusing to me. I can understand um, if we're acquiring capital via debt, which is probably the only justification of debt. Uh, not, you know, I mean, you don't borrow money to, to buy your next meal kind of thing, right? You can buy it to buy an asset, to make an investment. Um, so if it's not under debt, where that starts paying for it from some other source, not using debt vehicle, then it goes under capital outlay. Is that right? I mean, it seems part, to me it should. I would should. say yes to that. I'm it just trying to, to look should. through here and see. Because you'll see, if you look at on all of these pages, if you look at where it says article, right, and then the it says eight, listed. so you can tell eight was the budget that year, right, and then yeah. ten and stuff. So I had to go back and look to see, like ten. Yeah, this seems to be all I think are collective article. bargaining yeah. articles and stuff. So I had to look at the articles and see because under highways and streets, you'll see that there's article nine, fourteen, and twenty, and I. I'm sorry, I don't recall what Articles 9, 14, and 20 are right off the top of my head. I think 9 was the Lafayette. Was it Lafayette Road? Yeah, I think Maybe the 1.1. I, 1. Think, 1. I so think you'll find. Yeah, I think you, say try, nine you tend nine, to find yeah. them across the budget. The improvements <laughs> other than buildings, I bet that's the tuck field. The buildings for 20,000 could be the one time only where they fix the, uh, the front doors. Wasn't that like that? Oh, 19? maybe, yeah. That See, was I think other than buildings. So we're talking about in, like putting in the windows. Of, but i got to believe that Article 42 was the tuck field that they voted in. Oh, yeah, I think so. Right, because right. I looked through some of the history uh, mm -hmm. when I saw this. And, you know, and I might ask well, I don't know. I just, and all of it seems to be coming from Warren Articles. Yep. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Everything that goes in there comes from Warren Articles so far that I've well, observed. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's the only thing money no. can come uh, from but, is Warren Articles. But article. it, does, it doesn't gender a question. How do you distinguish? Uh, it's a challenge yeah. to distinguish. And a lot of times I'll put something somewhere and DRA will call and say, oh, no, no, yeah. you will not put that there. You will move it to here. How do you distinguish uh, a capital item from an expense item? How do I distinguish a capital item? Okay. For, I go on the guidelines of the forms that it's given to me by DRA. I put the Warren articles up there with all of their language. And then there's a pre-review process where she goes, I say she, but it's whoever your well, that's DRA when you, that's administrator when you're, when, is. When you're identifying she. warrant articles, right? I'm sorry? When you're identifying warrant articles. Correct. Right. I'm, I'm looking at it from when you're acquiring an asset. Because. Well, we have a whole a fixed asset policy here that we follow, which is a totally <coughs> DRA, I don't know, has any care of what we See, consider. Because over the years, I've observed that at the end of the year, you know, there'll be money left over. And, and we might buy a fire truck or, you know, a police car or, or a, 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 some, what did you call it, Steve, a yard boy? Uh, what was it, yeah, a yard it was horse? Yeah, something or other. You called it a yard boy, I believe. <laughs> it, was, it was a yard horse, yeah. Yard horse for yeah. the uh, and, and, yeah. And, 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 and such things like that. Um, and that's coming out of the budget, you know, the so-called excess that's in the budget at the end of the year. And to me, these items are capital. Not they wouldn't have been reported on this form as capital, though, right, because right, this right, form right. is only based on, this form is strictly used for what is in the budget on the, uh, um, in the warrant, uh, in, in the warrant, warrant or on the, vo on the ballot in March. This is, right. That's the only time you generate this form, right. and it's strictly what's voted on. So all of the money warrant articles oh, and yeah, the I got budget that. are on here. Let me, let me finish my question. I got that. Okay. So to me, it's like, okay, the, the operating expenses, that is to say, the things you buy that don't have a lifespan beyond, say, a year, are expenses. Yeah. Anything that has a continuing life is going to de be depreciated over years and is considered. Depends on how much it costs. You have to read the fixed asset policy. That's exactly. So what I won't asset. agree with exactly have, what you said. Sorry. Do we have a fixed asset? We do. Policy. One hundred percent have and, a fixed and, asset and, and policy. And you will be delighted in sharing with, with the budget committee, right? Sure. Great. <laughs> I appreciate that. That we have a policy because when we became compliant with GASB 34, Virginia, mm -hmm. when we became right. compliant with GASB 34, one of the things that you have to, exactly, to yeah. develop is a fixed asset policy. And so I think that was in 2014, my first year as a finance director, I had the pleasure of <laughs> um, becoming <laughs> compliant with, I think, three of the GASBs that year. And one of them was GASB 34 <laughs> and putting all of the fixed assets um, Right. into place and become in compliance I, according I to the that. auditors and we do have a policy that's the way when the auditors are here they check they go back and look at bills and they do that's one of the things that they actually audit to make sure that we've put everything in and we've depreciated it 
and they look through our expenditures and sometimes they'll come to me and say hey how come you guys didn't catch this and i'll either give them a good reason why or <laughs> we'll debate well, and we reason, put yeah. it in at that time <laughs> well so, i'll tell you i have been dreaming ever since that day that someday i'd read that that policy and the fixed asset policy yeah, so well you should have asked so, and then your so things now, that it's, now, you now that it's coming it'll also be a daydream as well dream Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well you know what's funny i will make a comment and what i christy this is excellent i'll tell you one thing and, and mike pluff's going to like this statement because one of the things i like about what sticks out is we can say to the public you can do a chronological art warrant articles that was the vote is what they voted on we can say to the public we spent 42 million this is what the public asked for and that's one thing the public should be proud of because those are monies identified strictly for that purpose. The, the other part of this is we struggle with this bottom line and, and things go one direction or another. But I like how the layout is because I tell people, I say, listen, mm -hmm. we voted in some great stuff here and so you should feel comfortable that money is being spent based on where it's going. And you have a nice, I know it's DRA, but I like, I love your new format. I mean, I go back, Mike and I were getting the pencils out of 95, we didn't know it, but it's really good. It's really, Thank you. Very good. So the MS, Forms are DRA's yeah. dictation of how but to I love report her. things. Yeah. The budget book is the budget book. Right, the budget book, I would say, I love this. I love that. As long as we get clear as to who's dictating what to whom. And, <laughs> and, you might note, and you might note, Brian, that I think it's we're three years into the uh, software portal. Correct. See, DRA forms. That's not that fun, though. Well, you don't need to tell oh. me how much fun it is. I was going to say, we're but, not really great friends of the DRA no, portal, but, personally. But the thing, <laughs> is, the thing is, I think it's important. Steve has his own dreams. Since oh. we're talking about the DRA and we're talking about this, all of these forms, including the ones that are required, some of them are si signed by the uh, town clerk. There, when you look at that, it's, it's very informative. But the, the thing is that a few years ago, Brian, it was a little bit easier because you'd simply print a form out and you know write in whatever you wanted to do. Nowadays, you have to log in Plug to the portal in. with a password, and it's not easy to make these forms to even fill them in because, I that last because year. there are, if you make a mistake, then <laughs> you can't go any further. There's actually, on the top of the form, there's a red and a green. If it turns green, if both turn green, then you can proceed to the next then step. you're happy. But believe yeah. me, it's not easy with these forms. They're not easy to work on, and they have to be done just right. And, and when you have 44 warrant articles and you have to put each of them in individually, oh. Yeah. And you actually have to put in the wording so that the wording can be approved right. by DRA so that none of your articles are disallowed afterwards. Right. Thank goodness I can copy and paste that part. So right. I don't want you to think I have <laughs> to be typed them of, all. It's but a lot, it's of, a lot of, of It's a lot of work. Back and forth. With the is DRA. it possible for... Hmm? Copy, cut, and paste. Yeah, that's right. Is, is it, is, since you generate this form, uh, I guess you do it online, is that right? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Do, you, do oh. you get to keep a digital copy yourself? Yes. You do. Cool. So is it possible you could... Send me it. Email it to me. I sent you the digital copy, well, the PDF of it. Says. I'm speaking about the, the seven. No, not the PDF. I want because oh. I want to be able to copy and paste as well. <laughs> that's what this is. The seven thirty seven. That is the form that's on. No, but he wants an Excel version of it. I believe they can put it in. I think I can export it into Excel. I can. Yeah. If you could just get me the. My one. copy and pasting is literally on the website, right. dictating right. like where I put can. things. I you can't. Can I can't no. send that. No. No, if you could just paste it in an email with me, that'd be fine. And I'm only asking for the special election because I haven't been able to get that text yet. And, and, and I need to populate it in HamptonBud.com. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I, I have the Warren article in Word from the special that's perfect. election. That'd be perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, when can you we. You guys are giving me a lot to do. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you today, but you said surprise you tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I was in trouble as soon as you walked out. Can, can I ask you a question? Have had so many question marks on your phone. It's just a quick question. This is a very quick question. I'll remember that for next. No, time. I want to ask. Just, well, it's a, it's I think a, we're over six hours. I'm asking the chair because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of new with the budget committee. I'm back in the budget. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be asking the question. You're well, no, ask. but you already know what question I'm going to ask. Can we, as budget committee members, could, can I go up to her office and ask her questions, or do I? No, have you to? cannot. The protocol is to go oh, to the so chair. We can't ask anybody. We can't talk to anybody <laughs> outside of here. <laughs> we established this last spring. Brian, I have established this last spring. Any questions on so, I, if I come into town hall, I got to tape over my mouth and just kind of say wave and go up. I, I didn't. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> the discussions that we had 
and the Board of Selectmen established it's their policy that the chairman and the vice chairman can go talk to certain members. Otherwise, <coughs> we have to get uh, the okay through the town manager if they work under the town manager. And if they don't work under the town manager, we have to go to the Board of Selectmen if they work under the Board of Selectmen. So that's what I have to live with okay. as your well, chairman. Okay? Thank you. If, in fact, I want to be consistent with the protocol. I have not yet found the protocol to be inhibiting me getting information. If I do, then I'll deal with it then. Okay. okay. Christy, Thank when, you. When can we uh, expect the uh, budget book based on your best guess today? Are we finishing them on the 29th, Regina? <laughs> what, well, next week's the 22nd, so. I know, but then I think the 29th is public works and legal, correct? Right. I thought 22nd was public works, no? No, it got moved because we couldn't have our meeting on Thursday this week. Okay, we were supposed so to meet this Thursday and then finish on the 22nd. Oh, so the but this room's being used on Thursday night, and we didn't want to have it on a not public. We wanted it to be on television oh, and publicized. So, you, so 29th is your last day to get everything done or no? Supposedly. That's <laughs> so by Halloween, the 31st, we'll get them, right? So is the, oh, we'll, yes, we'll, sure. We'll, 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 we'll Do you want me just to need, stay here 24 if, hours a day? Oh, the 29th is a Monday, <laughs> I think, if for whatever yeah. reason we yes, don't. Yes, it is. Friday. I'm guessing. I, my hope is to have them to you by Friday. Oh, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, that's got the whole weekend. Yes. We've all along acknowledged that it was going to be around about Halloween. So this right. is, I just wanted to get more clarity now that we're closer to the date. So Good. on the 29th, it will be finalized. And so your, your Excel spreadsheet will be done on the 30th, I assume? <laughs> Jeez. Well, it it depends on I think I think it'll, I'll answer that question with, it depends on how many changes I'm faced with on sure. the evening of the 29th. No How's later, that for No later fairness? than the 31st, sorry. Good answer. My Excel spreadsheet? Yeah. Well, that's what you mean. A PDF of it could be available to you. No, Very the spreadsheet. Good. I the understand spreadsheet. that, but I'm just saying. I could have a PDF to you guys probably by the 31st. The Excel spreadsheet causes me to go in. I know, I know. And repopulate so, every 451 oh. lines. I understand that he's that more than one What's column? a reasonable date on your part? I'm hoping the second if he wants his Excel <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> 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 or the Excel spreadsheet you'll have probably on the first. Right. How's that? And your book's on the second. Okay, fine. So you got that. We're going to get the Excel spreadsheet on the first. The Excellent. book's on the second. And I can okay. send the summary out with the PDF fairly quickly, but nobody seems to like the PDF but version for some reason. But if anyone else would like the PDF version, I can send that out to you guys within a probably a day Whatever's or so. Whatever's easier for you. Yeah. Wouldn't the second that she originally said be easier on her so we don't overburden her? She's, you know, it's a Friday versus a Thursday. We're not overburdening her. We've, we've gotten the Excel spreadsheet now for What are you going to do with it on Thursday afternoon? It is an overburden. I just want to know when I'm going to get it, Frank. When we are going to get it. It is a Friday. Friday. It works out. Probably. Every weekend. Like every weekend. I think Friday is a good deadline. That's what we're going to I'm not giving a deadline. I'm asking best guess. Oh, not deadline. Best guess is Friday. <laughs> yeah. I think Friday Best is guess is Friday. Second's good. I Relax, think. Frank. Yeah. yeah. Put too much pressure on the point. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm asking what good thing. <laughs> we don't even have her on the paper. Drop it, Frank. <laughs> now, if the board doesn't approve the budget on the 29th, then all bets are off. How's that? That's fine. Absolutely, I understand all of that. All of this is right. dependency oh, yeah. on uh, the upstream. But yeah. I believe that that is our goal to have that this done that goal, day. Yes. And I think that if for some reason they are expe the expressing Friday? to go longer, that seconds of Friday, the Friday. Friday. Right. The first or the thirty November second, like next night. Friday. Friday. Would that be the next Thursday? No, I think we're going to meet on that Tuesday right after. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Oh yes, I think that's Did what Rusty said yeah. last night. Yeah. So I just confirmed with Regina, I do believe if for some reason they are not able yeah. to complete it on the 29th, the intention is to meet on the 30th that's with the Board of Selectmen. So it's only one that's day reasonable. later. So, yeah, that, yeah, so that's you true. still get it. They'll yep, you still get it. That's fine. So yeah. we'll still get it on Friday that week. No, just work the book itself. Well, we'll get the book and get out. Get you guys book. better all be up here Friday afternoon. Oh, I'll be up, up there We're Friday morning. morning. The, reason why, the reason I'm asking, Just Chris, kidding, Steve. You don't have to come No, but you'll, okay. Chris, you'll send a, you'll the reason send a I'm note asking out. everyone. You'll send a notice out. Everyone, yeah, the reason I'm asking is we have our next scheduled meeting on yeah, the, the following Thursday the 6th. No, you have it on Tuesday the 6th. Tuesday the 6th, election. And Thursday that would be better. Sorry. <laughs> I think we also it would, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You only have meetings scheduled that week. Don't have the sixth. Should have my computer. No, he has the sixth and the eighth. Yeah. We have the. I didn't see the eighth on HamptonBud.com. I think I put it on my calendar. Check out HamptonBud.com. Yeah. Um, but my question: Why do we have election night? Is there a reason for? That? Yeah, let's meet on the Thursday instead. 
Well, I just want to be sure that you know we're meeting on the right day. That's all. I'm, I'm oh, I didn't actually have it on this one. Why wouldn't we have it on election night? Since oh, we're I don't all, know. Since I... we're all going to be out anyway. <laughs> we're really gonna, we're gonna have a budget meeting on election night. But Gina won't. Why not? That's we're his all, schedule. We all have to go out to vote anyway. <laughs> yeah, some of us are going to be holding signs until we're at the polls. Yeah. All right, so we'll reschedule to 8 p.m. How's that? Okay. 8:05. Eight o'clock. That's not a good idea. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. Six. <laughs> Just let us know what you come up with. We already did on on the hint on the schedule. Yeah, I was going to say I believe that I thought you had the six and the eighth on the schedule that was given to me at least. I, 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 I haven't I looked up hintbud.com. Regina is looking it up now. I believe that someone gave me a schedule and I could have sworn the six and the eighth were on it. I believe it's correct, but you know I don't have the November six or November eight. Wow, no. Both, so both nights he had scheduled? Six, Tuesday November and Thursday. You've got to post it. Oh, good. The 6th yeah. and 8th, correct? Eight, yeah, 6th and 8th. Throw up the 6th. I say we push it. If you it push says it just it. police emergency. Yeah, it just says police on the... What we had last night is... Was that last night? You had yeah. police and fire. Last night. Everything you had from last night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had Basically the 8th public also. Safety. Yeah. And just so you guys know, if anyone does want to follow along, I think I mentioned it last night, but the... Oh, not the Excel version, but there is a PDF <laughs> of the budget up on um, the website under fi under finance. documents. And then if you look in finance, it says, like, budgets in progress. There's a copy up there. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is yeah. looking or wanting to see, yeah, I just put that up. Sorry. Oh, good. Yeah, I just put that up there. So <laughs> that is um, up on the website. Good. And I now I think I'm going to try and answer a question that you so had at the very beginning. If you guys are, if Tim, if you were referring to 2017 in regards to your legal question, mm -hmm. I can tell you that on outside council, the budget line for outside council in 2000 and, um, well, actually, I don't have that budget well, line. Well, legal in general. The legal, the outside yeah. council fees uh, in 2017 totaled on the actual line was 153000 802. So that would lead me to believe that whatever the board did approve or didn't approve, well, whatever the board did approve was actually shown on the appropriate line from the legal budget and not transferred. Because I, this is so my budget book right here. See all your pretty tabs. So they were over budget then? Um, over budget as a whole, let's see. I, I only have his actual expenditures. I don't have his budget, but it, his actual expenditures for the year were. Three hundred and four thousand and thirty dollars. So I'm guessing that's overspent. So that's how Yes. So that's how it will be reflected. It will be reflected right there. And I think that was the question. That was my question. That was your question. There you have your answer. So one thing. This is legal budget. That was from seventeen. Okay. And I think that's what he was referring to. Not this year. I think we're going back a year. Well, he's in the Ballesteros. Okay. For the the, yeah, for the, the, the the question we currently have in my at least in my mind is I'm hearing noise about not uh, wanting to meet on the sixth. Yeah. Is that uh, accurate from my members? I am your servant, so tell me. Fine. To I'm open to whatever anybody wants to do. I've got what it in my what do you think it cancels the sixth and meet on the eighth? Right. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Is that is that the that's, that's probably body's true. preference? Yes, please. Yes, please. So November 8th, okay. Let's go around. Frank? Yeah. Uh, what time are you looking at? Cancel the 6th and Seven. continue with the 8th. The 8th is what already on the calendar. 7 right. o'clock. It's already on the calendar. Well, or it I, should I, be because it's on. I understand that, but I, I have a... a I'll, okay, I'll, I'll be... So you want to cancel the 6th? No, yeah, that's fine. Whatever, I'm open. I'm open. Yeah. You want to cancel the 6th? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, yeah, you're fine with... I'm fine with canceling, yes. Okay. Yeah. You want to cancel the 6th? Yeah. It, Mr. Yeah. Ladd? Cancel. Unanimous. Cancel. Cancel the sixth and the eighth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so say Mr. Hammond over there. <laughs> yeah, but we haven't heard that yet tonight. Well, yeah, it's coming. It's, it's not going to count anyway. It's coming. Take another vote. All right, it's so really so then the, the sixth is going to be a canceled meeting. Right. Uh, what was on the sixth <clears throat> will be the eighth, and and things will push, be pushed out from there accordingly, uh, and that will give us a chance to look more time to look at the book right. before we meet. Right. Were you going to let the people know that we're supposed to come in on the 6th? Or like the police or I'll let them know. I haven't officially invited them yet on the 6th. No, oh, I think okay. the town manager is the one who passed out the schedule oh, that okay. sent to Christina, I believe. Yeah. Yes, and she's agreed that I will let her know when I do updates and she will notify the appropriate parties, including the town manager. So uh, that, that resolves that. The next meeting is not the 6th, it will be the 8th.
Okay, so now that that is resolved, uh, I'm sorry to jump ahead on the agenda, but does anyone have any other questions on of Christy? No. Nope. Uh, relative to her presentation. Uh, I just had one question. Yes. To the extent you can, yes. can you project increased revenues for the coming year, like uh, additions to the tax base? I realize certain revenue streams uh, you cannot I know. adjust the revenues on when I do the revenue budget, and that's included on the MS-737. I don't intend to adjust them too drastically unless I see a big difference between what we've taken in this year compared to like the previous year in if it's I do do a little research to see if it's something that we believe will continue on or not and the reason that I don't adjust it too much is because of the fact that when we have to do our revised revenues we do that prior to the tax rate being set and that's when the revenues become very important <coughs> to the taxpayers at that right. point mm -hmm. because um, that's used to offset, help offset the tax, the expenditures on your budget and stuff. So I had to send my, my MS, my revised revenues, it's the MS 434 mm -hmm. at the beginning of September. Yeah. The advisor from DRA will call prior. She'll allow me to adjust them again if I feel that it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. So if we can adjust anything up or down so that it'll have the best impact on the tax rate before it's set in no, for I'm, the next tax bill. I was more interested in at the beginning of the budget process, mm -hmm. you can anticipate certain increased revenues for the coming year. Can you give us that number at the start? So we know what we spent last year. We know what the some of the increased revenue will be this year as a guideline. Yeah, in one of the appendix in your budget books is always the revenue budget. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and that's when I usually go through and try and right. decide if there's anything that I see that feel like... Um, Here's an example, and you heard this last night if you were uh, listening to the selectmen's meeting, but the revenue that we receive for um, um, the emergency management division has increased. So we know that already. So I've already increased that number in the revenue budget. Tell the 84,000 that Senator Hassan gave? Is that what you No, it, it oh. was like, no, the 84,000 was for something else oh, okay, for right. the uh, grant at FIRE. But well, there was, um, we get quarterly money for the That's emergency correct. management. Yeah. Yeah. And it All used right. to be like $2,000 or correct. something. Yep. And we were, the police chief, since he's the director, was notified that next year we're going to get 12484 yeah. or right. something. Yep. Right. So in, in cases like that, Bob, yes, I did. I would up that number in um, the revenue budget, which will be on the MS-737 mm -hmm. that you guys have. So you will see that in your um, budget books. What about the tax revenue? Can you project oh, anticipated increases in tax revenue by assessed property coming online that's just been built? Yeah, because when I, indirectly, yes, because when um, he, when the assessor submits his MS-1, I believe is the correct number, he submits that in April, so then we have a new basis that yeah. we're working with, and that's what I use when I'm calculating all of the fiscal impacts and stuff, so... In essence, we're using the most accurate numbers that we have at the time of the whole budget process. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an interesting discussion, that whole area this year, I mean, the assessor, whatever we're doing, but that's usually what you're right. And it, that fluctuates because building could happen before or after the deadline and goes on to the next second half right. installment or whatever, but that's going to well, be a, I'm looking forward to that discussion. But. Just so you know, I have... Uh, I have a, a meeting scheduled with Jamie tomorrow to get background on this uh, outsourcing of the assessor. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to figure out the right way to get uh, the information to the budget committee in the, in, in Can the, we have all in the most effective way. Uh, well, my, my objective is to understand what's going on from the questions that I just naturally have mm -hmm. and also to determine how best to get that information before the budget committee in the most efficient way, most productive way possible. Uh, so it will be coming forth. Probably, I assume it, it, in some manner, uh, probably Jamie and Fred will come in before this body and uh, make their presentation. Uh, but you know, just so you know that I am having that meeting tomorrow to get a kind of a preview of what's going on there. And if any of you have any particular questions or concerns that you want me to bring into that meeting, I'll be happy to do so. Uh, 
So that's that. And I was asked to change that to 130 if that was okay with you. And I forgot, yeah, instead of one. I it was up my entire life. <laughs> I'm I'm not not yeah, 130 is fine, I know. Jamie wants to eat lunch, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. You're not going to get a comment out of me on that one. That's, that's not going that down that road. Mr. LaBranche. Um, I want to just mention that with what Bob was asking about revenue, um, anticipating revenue, when the MS-737 is done, whatever the budget is, the revenue number has to match. Now, whether the revenue comes from taxation, parking lot, any, 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 any money, any revenue that comes into the town. Um, obviously, if you have a wonderful year at the parking lot, that revenue is going to reduce the amount of taxes that have to be raised. But on the, on the form itself, um, the two numbers have to match. Revenue has to match expenditures. It has to. Or you can't. The light won't turn green, okay? <laughs> That's all there is to it. So, and, 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 and whatever... Whatever revenue comes in, you can anticipate. You know the the building department, the um, the planning board. Uh, they they have a general idea. The assessing department. They work together. They have a general idea. I mean, these big buildings that are being built in town, whether it's uh, the new um, nursing home or the the Marriott or, or one of the buildings down the beach. Obviously, those things are bringing a lot more tax revenue in, which is good. When, when it That's does, so because then it's, yeah. right, it, 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 how it floats the boats. Yeah. It, it lifts all boats, so. But you keep saying the assessor. We don't have an assessor. Well, too late for assessing that. department, <laughs> right. That's we another, that's, that's, Brian, that's, that's another whole, it's, no, it's please. It's better to call out the assessing so function. Not that big of department. The assessing whatever. function. Function. I, I will give a question to function you Function conjunction, yes. Has DRA blessed this thing called outsource assessing, which is unheard of in the state of New Hampshire. I heard that it had. Well, okay, but I, guess what? I hear the Board of Selectmen talk about everything in writing. I want stuff in writing. I'm not going to do hearsay. I want to know, is this all up and up? Because I've talked to several people in other communities. I, like I said, I just didn't come off the term chart. I got your message, and I'll see what I can do uh, tomorrow. Okay. I hope we get a good <laughs> Thank writing. Thank you, Mr. Walter, Thank you. for that feedback. I appreciate it. Anyone else have any feedback? You can do it now, or you can do it after the meeting tonight. Uh, or even tomorrow morning, if you prefer. Uh, just call me up. Okay. Uh, any other questions at all? No. Absolutely wonderful finance director. Really appreciate nice your work. Nice job. Really Steve. appreciate Thank your you. work. Very good. Very Thank good. We'll you go easy on you in the budget. Thank yeah. you for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's just planning a lot of questions. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Thank you for coming in, Christy, and helping me overcome my continuing ignorance on these matters. I really no appreciate problem. that. Can you write that down, Dave, tomorrow? We'll do. It's on tape. <laughs> we'll it's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I no longer have any ignorance to resolve, you it's time to die. Because <laughs> that means the end of learning. <laughs> Somebody shoot and Do you find that useful? <laughs> Life is not worth living without learning. Life is not worth living without learning. Okay. He's got centuries left. Any? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We're all in trouble. <laughs> Millennia. Millennia. <laughs> Um, now we say Steve's uh, No, no, new business. Anybody with any new business? Anybody with any new business? Thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, be meeting next on November 8th. We will not meet on the 6th. We will meet on November 8th. Adjourn. We are hereby adjourned. Thank you very much. At 8.40.